put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Shadow Warrior Classic Complete via GOG.com You take on the role of a master ninja assassin. Shadow Warriors are the best of the best and you are the best of the Shadow Warriors. Shadow Warriors are employed as security bodyguards for large corporations. You work for the Zilla Corporation, which is one of the biggest, possibly the biggest corporation in Japan and possibly in general. Power corrupts and uh, ultimate power corrupts. That's not how that goes. Zilla is determined to take over the world. He turns to creatures from the dark side. And you choose to quit your job. However, Zilla realizes that you might pose a serious threat to him. So you become a target. And you now have to fight your way through these creatures from the dark side and face Zilla himself. If that sounds intricate and complex and interesting, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to burst your bubble. There's essentially no plot here. The, yeah, it's quite straightforward and, yeah, typical for the sub-genre. Now, this is somewhat average and mediocre. Some say that the gameplay is the only real redeeming factor and I'm inclined to agree. It's, yeah, it's very much a straightforward run-and-gun first-person shooter. It's made of the build engine, the same engine as Duke Nukem 3D and it's Yeah, it, it features a few extra, you know, additions to that. One of them is that you can drive and fire the weapons of vehicles. So you can be mowing down enemies with a machine gun. You can blow a hole in a wall in order to proceed using, you know, the cannon of a tank. You can use the machine gun of a patrol boat. It's, it's really cool. It is a fairly ambitious first-person shooter with usable ladders, you know, alternate fire on several of the weapons. You can swim using duck and jump, and you can swim on, you know, at the very surface of the water as well. And all of it quite quickly. And of course, you have to be careful or you might drown if you're under the water for too long. It's a very gory, violent, and bloody game. You can slice some of the enemies in two and watch them, you know, watch the two parts separate in front of you. Has. Did something just explode? Has it recently? In that case, it's gonna pretty soon, and this is, you know, some enemies might blow up, you might cause explosions, there might be static explosions, and some of these will, again, blow holes in walls and the like, and let you proceed through that. You can also shoot bunnies and most objects, whether moving or stationary. Objective-wise, this is often a bit of a key hunt, but there are also machines that may have to be activated or deactivated. You know, switches, levers, elevators, doors, you have to find your way through the game. So, 
it is not complete, you know, you can't go through just completely mindlessly, you know, shooting enemies and such, you can just run through that, but you do have to apply yourself, you have to approach it from a focused, you know, yeah, really, you know, you have to think about what you're doing in order to find your way through, it's, there's, there's a word for people who are turned on by, like, intelligent things, I want to say the word is sodomy, yeah, I know that's a bit of a stretch, I figured I could slip it in, thought it would fit, this turned out a lot messier than I thought, lube, there are hidden areas, and the AI can sometimes be quite good. Enemies will duck in cover and, you know, shoot and then go around a corner and things like that. The enemies include humanoid demons, some of which will crawl on walls and they can jump from wall to an, from one wall to another. They might lunge at you and such. There are ninjas ape monsters, koi, hornets, there are these flying ghosts that you literally see arise out of the corpse of someone you just killed, yeah, and the, there are four difficulty settings, and it gets really difficult on the higher ones, and it will challenge you even on the easiest ones, which I find is the way to go. I get that easy difficulty settings are for players who are less experienced, but if the game isn't going to challenge you at all, then what's the point? Playing, you know, a game should challenge you. And, you know, there aren't really randomized things, there are no bonus modes, there's really no real replay value. Boss fights tend to be okay. You can save at any time, which, you know, you can choose to either use that or just, you know, when you, you know, when, when you die, it will offer load most recent save. And if you say no, it's going to spawn you at, the, you know, you will just have died. You will spawn at the start of the level with basically no weapons. So you have to then gather them yeah, and yeah, if you want a more challenging game, you can choose to do that instead. And as far as I've been able to tell, there is no real limit on lives, which you know, was a thing from first-person shorts at this time. Now, there are some cheap difficulty, you know, challenge kind of stuff, where, like, very suddenly there have been one of these explosions very close to you and you know it might be an enemy who doesn't usually explode or use explosive weapons it might be a static explosion that you didn't see coming you know saving frequently can usually yeah you can usually avoid too much frustration from this but it still really shouldn't happen you can stun lock enemies, and on some you may have to, because some of them have really powerful attacks. And the, the game does not tend to put too many enemies in one place, or, you know, several too powerful ones in one place. So again, usually avoiding frustration in that. You will find and pick up, you know, health, armor, you know, there are bonus health pickups and such. You have to be aware of fall, falling damage in this. There, there are a few bugs. I didn't personally run into very many of them, but I know some have experienced that on the last seven levels of the game, basically, when they tried to save, it wouldn't save, and it would crash them to desktop. You can have some trouble adjusting mouse sensitivity, and 
it certainly is by today's standards yeah not not optimized and excuse me while you can have some trouble at, uh, judging the the depth I find it especially troubling and again this doesn't happen all the time but when you are moving up and down stairs and sometimes yeah just or or if there is a platform that is a bit above you it can be a little difficult to adjust your you know your your crosshairs to the right level to be hitting them which doesn't happen at all when you're on the same level the same plane and yeah that is a bit unfortunate and if you play it for very long at a time you may have to then like just take a few minutes to readjust to actual real life you know depth your your yeah depth perception or you yeah it it gets a little wonky after a while I at in one level I lost you know the game lost the keys that I picked up and I was forced to no clip my way through it but there yeah there are a few situations like that I'll get more into that you you have your just your fists to attack with and you can knock some enemies into the air with them and you have a katana which again can slice some enemies in half you have shuriken which you throw three at a time and they can like ricochet from that you might mistake this for a stealth game it very much is not the the enemies know you're there and they and you will run around with far louder and more destructive weapons than the three I've just mentioned. You can dual wield Uzis. There's a riot quad barrel shotgun which indeed can allow you to fire all four barrels at once. You know, and then you'll have to briefly reload. Or you can fire the barrels one at a time, so yeah, you know, and yeah, this comes in really, really handy. You have a missile launcher, not just a mere rocket launcher, which can also use heat seeking and launch nukes. So, yeah, and of course, you know, once you, I think it's one nuke that you can carry at any one time, and heat, I, I want to say it's like three shots, and then you'd have to find another pickup of it and of course these are a bit more rare and that again goes into you know if you if you choose to restart the level if you die if you found a nuke especially if it was in a level before the one you're currently in you really don't want to die and you of course have a grenade launcher where the grenades bounce a little so you know you can attack on ledges shoot around corners and that kind of thing this has sticky grenades. I don't know why it took them so long to do this again in the first person shooter genre because it's such an awesome thing to have. But yeah, they they work as proximity mines. So it's not, you know, it doesn't just stick and then explode. No, it's, you know, you can mine an area and that comes in really handy for areas with a lot of enemies, boss fights and the like. And of of course, you know, if the if you toss it and it you know comes close enough to an enemy, it will just explode. It doesn't have to use prox you know proximity. And yes, it does attach to enemies as well. The you also have an eraser style railgun, though for some reason, as far as I've been able to tell. You cannot shoot through even like some of the thinner walls and obstacles. I don't, it's such a missed opportunity. And you, you have these heads of like 
a, a certain kind of demon, and you can use it to fire what it fires, which is fire. And there are three different modes, all of them using fire. And you can... There, there's this heart that you can pick up as well, and you, of course, use it by squeezing it, and this will basically create a zombie of yourself, which will help you in fighting. The Others have pointed out that this is the weaker of the three... I think the three build titles, which, you know, the other two being, again, Duke of 3D and Blood. I don't remember how much I played of Blood. I know that I completed Duke Nukem 3D, each of the episodes of, you know, the, the full Atomic Edition. I'm not certain about Blood. I know I played it some. I, I'm afraid I just don't remember. I, I didn't play, you know... I haven't particularly played these since they first came out, so it's been a little while. But yeah, the, it's been said that this has the least balanced gunplay, and I can, yeah, I, I imagine that is correct. That seems to be correct, again, from what I remember. Certainly Duke Nukem has better, but yeah. And this features 3D voxels rather than 2D sprites for the guns. The only way to force reload in this is by just using up the, the bullets or shells left in the, the clip. And this can get a little annoying, especially if it's like part of the way through a fight. And yeah, I mean, it, it's easy enough to tell. You do have a readout of how many bullets are left, you know. Not really in the clip, but how many you're carrying total. And it's like, you know, an Uzi carries 50 bullets. So, you know, dual, you'll be reloading for... Or wait, is it 25? Yeah, whatever. It's it's a certain amount, and you can tell from when you reload. I believe it's 50 per. And, yeah, you know, you have to reload for each time all four barrels have been used in the shotgun. And yeah, this gets annoying when there's like one barrel left and you're facing an enemy where you want all four and you just, you know that this enemy is coming up, but you can't like reload without just firing that last barrel. This is especially annoying with the Uzi since you might be firing for several seconds before it reloads and yeah. And like other late 90s, mid to late 90s first person shooters, this frustratingly enough lacks a proper rifle weapon. You know, most of your guns are either short range or very powerful and thus have low ammo. And yeah, when you want to attack from afar, you know, this is something that is not a problem at all in modern FPS. And yeah, it's just, it's it's quite annoying. You get all of the guns very early, and yeah, this just it takes the fun away from building up to weapons again, something that modern first-person shooters do a lot better. It does make sense if you're playing it to you know if you let yourself restart a level anytime you die yeah because having to pick up all the weapons then it makes sense that they're all over the place and do note that you can pick up ammo without picking up the gun itself so you might be you know getting full ammo without having the gun to use that ammo and it kind of lacks a you know, the, the guns could be more interesting, and it kind of lacks a real standout the way that, you know, Doom has, I believe it's called the Plasma Gun, which is literally an assault rifle that fires plasma energy. And Duke Nukem 3D has the Ripper, a multi-barrel, personal-carried machine gun. 
you know, these are ones that you really remember and yeah, this one doesn't really have any that are that cool, you know, and it, it doesn't help that, I mean, I do like that you can knock people into the air with your fists, slice through people with katana, and throw shuriken, but at the, at the end of the day, those are fairly basic, and so are Uzis, and there's nothing that special about the grenade launcher, and, you know, unless you count the extra, the, the alternate modes for the missile launcher, it's just another missile launcher, and, yeah, I mean, the, the, First person shooters from this time tended to go for really overpowered and over the top kind of weapons in your hands. And yeah, after a while, it just, you kind of run out of really cool, interesting concepts for that kind of thing. There's only so big you can go. The graphics are quite good and you know, the the versions that you can get of this today, you know, do allow for a higher resolution and it's optimized, you know, without pixelation, yeah, with minimal pixelation, you know, it's just that you can only do so much to games from this time, which do, they did tend to try to do more than they could do really well, so yeah. And it's optimized for modern, you know, graphics cards and such. Now, you do have some really cool, you know, like ninja kind of inventory items. You have a gas bomb which emits choking smoke. A smoke bomb, yeah which allows you to, you know, it makes you partially invisible for several seconds. A flash bomb, which blinds enemies. Caltrops, which you throw to the ground and, you know, enemies that pass over them will be harmed. And I think also partially stun locked, so yeah. Night vision for the many dark areas. A portable medkit and a toolkit which allows you to fix broken vehicles. This does have multiplayer, but I haven't really... I wasn't really able to play any matches. I've read that it's basically IP to IP, which makes good enough sense, but yeah, you know, it's it would be nice if they I don't know. I don't know enough about coding to say if it would be like incredibly difficult to yeah, to to do it differently for today. And back then I yeah, back then it probably was limited to that kind of thing. And the the thing is that whether you go to Steam or GOG, the message boards do not really have, like, threads of, you know, yeah, people saying, I'm looking for multiplayer players, you know, so, which is true of other dead multiplayer games. Anyway, you can adjust the rules, set a kill limit, a time limit, you know, there, you can choose color and players of the same color will be on the same team. You know, there are, you know, three levels of amount of monsters, and you can also set that to off. You know, you can adjust friendly fire, you can choose to play with or without nukes. And you can, you know, any, any player of this can choose themselves to host or client. But yeah, you do just sit around and wait for someone, and again, if it's only IP to IP, that isn't going to happen at all unless you find someone specific to, so yeah. And you can't particularly leave the rules open, again, something you can do with more modern multiplayer games, so that it's just, you know, anyone playing, just, you know, it doesn't show online player amount, much less a server list. 
and yeah, it goes through DOSBox, which, you know, okay, that makes sense, but the graphics, you know, has a new menu made for it, and, you know, when you start out the, the multiplayer, you are asked to choose, you know, host or client, and so, yeah, again, I don't know enough to say if it would have been incredibly difficult to make a separate menu and add these other options, but as it is, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is when you buy a game like this online, it would be nice if when it says multiplayer, there would be this little asterisk that said IP to IP only, and it's basically dead. Because, again, if there were threads of like, okay, just looking for MP partners, yeah, you know, and, and yeah, you can also, I mean, there's Deathmatch, which is the one I've described the rules of, and then there's a co-op mode, so, yeah, I mean, there's, you could have a lot of fun with this, but, yeah, the, the fact that it's dead and so limited in general, that even if a ton of people came in, it would still have to be, you'd have to organize and coordinate it, that would be nice if it said that when you're choosing which game to buy. I should mention also there are apparently six maps and I will full well admit that I did not make the... I could have chosen a shorter path for the where I where I chose to install it to you know the folder yeah I was still surprised that I had to personally tell it where the maps were and it didn't the the path I chose was too long for me to enter the whole thing so yeah again just Asterisk, that's all I'm asking. And there is also a, a rule for deathmatch called no spawn, which means that some items and such will not respawn, which can make things, yeah, very interesting. Now, it's been said of, again, these, the, the build games, and actually possibly you know, these mid to late 90s first person shooters in general, that this had the levels most likely to devolve into tedium and frustration. And yeah, that's very true. And, you know, that, that the levels in this, you know, there's a, f I'm going to try to quote directly, there's in, there's a fine line between nonlinear and deliberately obtuse, and this game does a flying kick over that line, and yeah. And it's also been said that this does nothing better than the other first personers from this time. There is some good level design, and as you make progress, some shortcuts will open up, so that helps. And, you know, there are alternate routes and unlockables in most levels. This does have larger and more varied, you know, environments than Duke Nukem 3D. And again, I'm told, blood. And, you know, you can get, like, a map overlay. You know, you can get wireframe. You can get, you know, you can zoom. You can scroll. It, yeah, it can be quite useful. And, yeah, I, again, I haven't played them all, but I know that Dark Forces 1 and 2 have this as well. I'm not, I don't offhand remember being in all that many others from this time, but, again, maybe I'm just misremembering. And this has true room over room situations. The water is transparent. Now, the, the, the levels, this comes with both the shareware and full, you know, episode, and the 
The shareware has four levels, a train station, a construction yard, a sewer level, of course, and, you know, these mountains and valleys. It took me two hours, 27 minutes, and 39 seconds to fully complete. And the, the, the full one, you know, having played both, it took me seven and a half hours. So, yeah, the full one isn't that much longer, considering that it's... It has substantially more levels. Now, the... Yeah, the, the full episode includes an airport, you get to break out of jail, there's a harbor with this huge battle cruiser with this massive cannon, and yes, you do get to fire it. There's, you know, a volcano, and the climactic boss battle has at least one pretty cool aspect to it, I will say. You know, there are areas that are inside, some are outside, and I should note that the shareware, the four shareware levels are not in the full version, so, you know, make sure you play both. This has quite well done music, and it's apparently the same composer as Duke Nukem 3D, and this one was done without a MIDI device, which allowed for substantially better quality. And yeah, the the music and ambience, you know, yeah, it, it has a quite well done atmosphere to it. And it's this great, like, fast rock kind of, I, I don't know music at all, but yeah, it's, it's, I like to say about the original Red Alert, not two. I haven't played three and I don't intend to. Every song in Red Alert 1 puts you in the mood to destroy the enemy base, you know, build your own and decimate the enemy base. This this does the same, just with you know without the base thing and just yeah. Now the you, you the the music is as a separate download on the GOG version. Now the there are two ex expansion packs in this that are not in the free Steam version as well as you know the the compatibility. Yeah, has also not been updated in the free Steam version, but yeah the. The one main campaign and the shareware levels, they are in the free Steam version. So, if, yeah. Hence why I'm going to be describing the two expansion packs in some detail. And also, you know, if you've played the full one and you're like, are the expansion packs worth... Yeah, this is for that. Wanton Destruction, I know I'm supposed to pronounce it the other way. I choose this way has, you know, about 10, 12 new levels and, you know, some new artwork, some human replacements for regular enemies. They still behave in the same way, but it's still a cool, you know, it's nice that there's some difference. And, you know, you go through an office building, a restaurant, skyscraper, you're on a plane. You're inside of a plane. Let's say it's experiencing, let's go with bad weather. Yes, that's, yeah. But, I mean, you're more or less safe as long as you're inside of the plane, right? You have to leave the plane. Again, midair, more than once, where a single misstep could mean your imminent horrifying fall to your death so yeah now you can tell that it's expansion pack you know the levels just aren't quite as polished as high of a quality as the main ones although they are close 
two levels are bugged to where I had to cheat my way through them, and that's a bit annoying. It took me three and a half hours to play through. And then there, excuse me, is Twin Dragon, excuse me, where basically you realize that you have an evil twin, as it were. You know, you were separated at birth, and yeah, your twin has become evil, and he's using creatures from the dark side, yeah. And the, yeah, it, it features 13 new levels, and it's really just a map pack. Basically, nothing changes other than, again, the quality of levels. There, there are barely any boss fights in it, even. And the, the second level of it has these obnoxious proximity mines. You can hear them, but if you've seen one, it's probably too late, and then you just have to replay. On, you know, again, it helps to save all the time, but it's just. It's so cheap and annoying. It has this level that starts out straightforward, then becomes a maze. There's a military research facility, a waste processing plant, and a palace. It took me four hours to complete. And this is where we get to everyone's favorite part of my more recent videos where it applies where I discuss the offensive material this you know this goes for this kind of Asian you know thing and first-person shooters from this time did often offend minorities you know and yeah, among other things, this seems to think that Japanese culture and Chinese culture are the same. <sighs> among the more egregious is that when you <laughs> when you load up the nuke, your character might, you know, joke that it's like Nagasaki or like Hiroshima, which is pretty pretty ugly. And the, yeah, it fits in as many of the Asian stereotypes as it can. The laborers and, you know, their, their hats. I know there's another term for it. It's quite offensive and I'm not going to use it. And yes, the these laborers do suicide. It's their attack. And, you know, some other enemies might also, I've seen ones like shoot themselves in the head and such. But that's if they're, you know, if you are killing them, if they're basically so low health. But, yeah, you know, again, this thing of, you know, oh, they attack as a suicide. Kamikaze did that. The, the, the strategy of the Kamikaze is if they already, if they can't attack in any other way, if they're going to crash anyway, or if they're out of ammo or the like, in that case, it makes decent enough sense to, you know, you, you can say, you know, oh man, willing to commit suicide, they are likely to die if the plane is going to crash anyway. You know, yeah, sure, sometimes, you know, you could maybe, you know, parachute away, but nevertheless, it's not like, you know, some kind of lemming thing. It's just that if it's be captured, die, or one more shot at killing someone, they opt for the latter. And, you know, it's not like they were just suicidal. And if they were, it would be quite ugly to mock them for it. Yeah, you have fortune cookies, you know, these anime girls that, you know, you might find one in the middle of showering, and, yeah. And the the protagonist who you play as has severely broken English, and a double entendre name, which I'm not going to repeat. Duke Nukem 3D is offensive to feminists like myself for its portrayal of women, but otherwise, it is just, 
Again, I, I don't remember it well enough, but it's basically America poking fun at itself, you know, at the things that were popular in American action movies. Whereas this, you know, at first you might think, oh, it's like, you know, kung fu movies and such, you know, Asian action movies, but not only that, as I just mentioned, you know, it's it's taking on this other culture that, yeah, it's the the when you do this kind of thing, you know, preferably the joke should be like funny or clever, but that's not really the case. It's just you know there there's some really cheesy lines and yeah, double entendres and things like that where you know names will sound like something else and such but there's nothing else to it it's not starting a debate it's not pointing at something that yeah that that might be problematic and that we should look at and yeah consider changing it's it's just being offensive and you know, you you might say, you know, it's it starts the debate, but if you can't do that without offending, without attacking something that isn't your own to attack, you know, there's nobody beats up my little brother but me. You know, it's you you stick to your own and you don't walk all over and mock someone else's culture. And, yeah, I, the 80s and 90s felt the need to quote-unquote push boundaries, and I don't really understand why that, why being, you know, not politically correct, which I think it was Chint Uger of the Young Turks who recently pointed out, the people who complain the most about political correctness are the people who want to go against it. You know, those of us who care about, you know, not offending people who, you know, have done nothing wrong, is, yeah, we, we don't bring up political correctness anywhere near as often. It's the people who want to break it. Maybe it was Steve Shives, actually, come to think of it. But, yeah, I sometimes have a really dreadful memory. Yeah, you know, it's the people who want to be able to offend other people that complain about, that really obsess over what is politically correct. But yeah, why why is this good and not just offensive? You know, the um, mocking Asian culture is kicking down. It's xenophobia. I love when people say, you know, oh, it's, an, it's not racist because it's not really a race. It's not, you know, I'm not Islamophobic because Islam is, you know, fine. You're xenophobic. Are you happy now? The point is that it's being offensive and disrespectful to a culture, to people who, again, you know, are a minority, you know. Asian Americans were a minority. You know, they're they're a minority today. They're disrespected today. And it was much worse in the 80s and 90s. And yeah, it's just Yeah, if if you can't start the conversation without attacking the defenseless, let somebody else do it, you know. And, uh, yeah, it fits in a number of action flick cliches and sexual themes. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.